Hey folks, it's Tom, your frugal prepper. Um, I don't know if you can see that. It's just, uh, there's some snow on the ground. My wood's all covered up with snow. It is freaking cold outside. It is single digits last night. The wind has now started to die down a little bit at least, though. Um, but I kind of wanted to do a video and just talk a little bit about kerosene heat. Um... The, uh, you know, a lot of us have uh, kerosene heaters as kind of a backup heat source in case uh, the heat fails. And a lot of people have considered that and they think that kerosene heaters smell bad and they're just not good to, to use for that kind of a thing. Um, and so I wanted to just, as somebody that uses kerosene heaters nearly every day throughout the winter, although I do have a wood stove and I use that sometimes too, but mostly that's on the weekends when I have more time to watch and maintain the fire. Um, kerosene heaters are, are nicer just because you can turn them on and they run for 12 hours so you don't have to worry about them too much. Um... Now, what I can tell you is that if you burn them right they burn cleanly um, and right now if you walked in my house I've got two heaters running I've got this smaller one that's 10,000 BTUs and I have one of the round ones that's 23,000 BTUs in the other room you walk in my house you won't smell kerosene um, because they're burning correctly um, and that means getting them adjusted right and having the mixture right. But it also means having a clean, fresh wick installed and using the right kerosene and making sure that all of the dust and debris is cleared out of the air pathway. Now these actually pull air in the bottom down here, which goes up this, the center of this burner. And that's where it gets the oxygen from. Um, after a season of heating, these will start to get dog hair and stuff in the bottom because I have four dogs, but and dust or whatever will start to get down in under this. So you have to maintain your heaters. Um, and there's plenty of videos on YouTube on how to actually maintain them, so I'm not going to do a video on that. Although I just changed the wick in this one yesterday and the other one the day before. But if you are going to store one of these heaters, you need to go and pick up some of these, um, which are wicks. And have some extras. Now, th this one here is for the big round heater that I have like this. These will tell you what models they work with. Although there's basically a couple of major styles of wicks. And one for these bigger heaters. And then there's the one that works with the smaller heaters. Like the one I have here. Um, and these come in a few different styles. Now, this is the one that works with the most different models and brands. Um, there are some of these that are a little shorter, okay, and they'll only work with some of those models. Um, this particular one is the Dy Dynaclo brand, and what I like about it is they just make the, the wicks longer, and then they give you the marks that you line it up, and you look on this sheet of paper and it tells you what mark that you line it up to for your heater when you're installing it. Now these bigger ones, you don't have to line them up. They have steel pins that go in so that they can only be at one height. But I think it might be a good idea if you have a heater for storage. And if you haven't put kerosene in it and the wick's dry, take it apart. Figure, learn how the wick comes out and then put it back in so that you know how to do that. And then, you know, these are like 8 or 9 bucks for the small ones. And these are like 10 bucks for the bigger ones. Maybe 11 um, But have some extras of those on hand. And the reason is, is that not only do they eventually just need to be replaced, um, if you get bad kerosene, if you get kerosene that has some water in it, um, it's going to destroy your wick. Because once water gets in the wick, it won't soak kerosene up anymore. Because oil and water don't mix. And it'll be messy, it'll smell, it'll soot. And when one of these aren't burning right, they do smell horrible. They'll give you headaches, they'll make you nauseous. And you just can't burn them in, indoors when they're not burning perfectly. Um, when they do burn perfectly, they're like 99 point something percent efficient. And they are 
really clean burning. Um, the other thing is that all of these modern heaters with the modern wicks, these wicks are not just cotton, but they have fiberglass on the tips. So they're cotton up to a point, and at the very end you, where the flame is, is just fiberglass. Um, and, the, and the reason for that is just that, you know, fiberglass doesn't burn like cotton does. Now it does still turn black eventually because it gets loaded up with carbon. And what you can do to extend the life of your wick is, I do this about every couple of weeks because I run my heaters every day. Um, in fact, this heater probably hasn't been turned off in over a week. And um, basically you can pull the fuel tank out and take that outside and fill it and put it back in without ever having to shut the heater down. The big one, you got to turn it, shut it down to fill it. And of course, what sucks about that is it does make a little bit of smell when you first turn it off and when you first turn it on until it gets heated up. But when they're running correctly, that's not even that bad. And they warm up and get the temperature faster and burn cleaner sooner when they have a good wick in them. Um, but what you do is you take this heater outside when it's about to run out of kerosene and you just let it sit outside and run until it's completely empty and it's burned completely out. It'll smoke, it'll stink, but that's why you take it outside. But what that actually does is helps to burn all of the carbon out of the fiberglass on the edge of the wick. And that will make extend the life of your wick significantly. Now if you have an old oil heater that uses a cotton wick, you know, something from the earlier, you know, say from the 60s on back, Anything that was probably made in the 70s, especially late 70s and up, is going to take a fiberglass wick. Um, if you have an older one, then no, you never want to run those empty because it destroys the wick. So, but on newer ones, you do want to run them empty every so often. Um, the next thing is, is that not all kerosene is made equal. Um, now, you basically have the older style kerosene, which was uh, K1 kerosene, which was 500 parts per million of sulfur, roughly about thereabouts. Um, and that's a lot of times what still comes in the little plastic jugs, and it works fine. Um, the newer style kerosene that you get from the pump is only 15 parts per million of sulfur, and that seems to work fine. Um, the problem that you have is when you go to a gas station to buy kerosene. Now, most gas stations, you, they'll, they'll even say on the pump, this is not a product of Marathon. This is not a product of Shell. Okay, That's because the owner of that gas station has put in his own pump and bought his own kerosene from someplace to sell it. So you might get really good kerosene at one Shell station and go to another one and get really bad kerosene. Um, I know in my town, there's a marathon station near me that sells kerosene, and it is the worst kerosene in the world. I might as well try to burn diesel fuel in this thing. Um, after one, maybe maybe you'll get two, but usually after just burning one tank of that kerosene in my heaters, it's time to replace the wick, and it's loaded up with carbon and tar. The house stinks. It won't, it's hard to get it to light. It's just, it's horrible. Um... So I have to stay away from that place. I don't know if their kerosene's old or if it's just crappy. Um, but I think there's probably different grades. I, I don't know. Um, I think a lot of times these places have really big underground tanks and they fill them up and then try to sell it over the span of five years. You know, and it gets old towards the end. Um, we have a, a gas station chain around here called Swifty. They have okay kerosene. But um, I don't use them anymore because their pump is defective and when you grab the handle and touch the ground it shocks the crap out of you it about knocked me silly last time i leaned over and put my hand on the steel pole and had the other hand on the pump touching the metal and they still haven't fixed it a year and a half later and the guy's like oh if you just wear gloves you'll be all right and i'm thinking like no i'm not having a live electric kerosene pump handle sitting you know pumping flammable liquid into a plastic wet container that's sitting on the ground you know the last thing i need here is a spark fella yeah. Um, now I found that Speedway, which is another major gas station chain around me, their their kerosene is a product of Speedway. It's it's the nice thing there is if I go to any Speedway, any Speedway I've gone to, 
has had the same quality and grade of kerosene. Their kerosene burns clean, it burns nice. It's probably my second choice. Now there's a Shell station on the west end of town for me. Again, it's not a product of uh, Shell, but it's probably the best kerosene I've ever used. It's just, and even when you pour it, it just, you can tell it's just clean and really good and it has hardly any smell to it whatsoever. Uh, so my recommendation is before you store a lot of kerosene if you're using this as a backup heat source go buy a half a gallon of it put it in your heater in the winter time shut your furnace off and run it for a little while and see how it works in your heater now if your heater's brand new in the box you're going to need to run a tanker through tank or two through it first to really know how it's going to smell because it'll still be kind of burning in and all the machining oils and that kind of stuff will make them smell when they're brand new um, so you might need to run it for a little while to know exactly how it's going to act um, but and then when you're all done run it dry and sit it outside let it burn dry that way you're storing it again with a dry wick and everything in it and a clean wick um, but once you find the kerosene that smells the best and works the best because there's it's been my experience there's just a vast difference between gas stations on the quality of the kerosene um then that's the you know once you know what works best then that's what you want to store i think the last thing you want to do is go buy a couple of five gallon cans of kerosene put them on the shelf have the heater and then when you need it to go use it the kerosene makes it smells so bad that it's just and it's destroying your wicks and if you don't have extras then you're really going to be up you know you're going to be trying to run around in the middle of a storm or whatever to find the wicks and you know meanwhile the heater smells so bad that your family can either be warm and throwing up and having headaches and migraines or they can be cold and not have migraines and headaches and throw up you know i don't want to be in a situation where i only have those two choices um, so I just say this is a real option for a backup heat source, but if you get one and you use it and you're like, oh, that stinks, make sure you've run it for a while and try a different type of kerosene in it, um, to make sure that it's not just the kerosene that you're having the trouble with. Um, also don't pay full price for these things. I was looking like on the, the picture of this Dynaglow is the newer version of this. I don't think this one has the fan. This one actually has a fan on it right here that will help circulate the heat through this heat exchanger up top. It circulates air. It really helps circulate it, although it works okay without the fan on too. Um, but this is like the older version made in Japan, probably a late 90s, early 2000 model of this one here that's now made in China. Okay. These are okay, too, though. I've seen some of these. They seem like they're made just about as well. Um, but, um, you know, here's what I paid for this one. Okay? Wait till you go to, go to garage sales in the middle of July and August. That's when you're going to find the deals on these things. Okay? But selling new, this thing might cost you $220. Okay? There's no reason to pay $220 for one of these. Because even if it's dirty and it's been well used, you know, you just take this thing apart, you clean it up. There's other YouTube videos on how to do that. And it'll probably work like new. Um, and you will have spent $5 instead of $220. Um, and I, I see these all the time at garage sales around here. Now, if you live in California or something, you know, where it's normally warm, there might not be as many around. So maybe you just take a vacation and go south, and, or go north, I'm sorry, and find some there. I don't know. There, You might not be as concerned about backup heat. But here in Ohio, where we're having single-digit temperatures already and it's not even Christmas, um, normally, this time of year, my kale is still growing in the garden, okay? And we're in the single digits now. You know, it's important to have some backup heat. It's also important to realize, you know, the tank typically in this one or the big one lasts about 12 hours. The big one will hold, like, just under two gallons normally. This one will hold one gallon. 
so know the capacities on your tanks and how long they'll burn for just calculate how much kerosene you want to store kerosene is a very stable product it'll store for a long time things to remember are fill the cans up as full as possible there's less room for condensation try to store this in a place that has as less cool and heat cool cycle so there's less chance of condensation because water in your kerosene is bad um, and you may consider um, getting 55 gallon drums of kerosene um, which you can buy the 55 gallon drums of kerosene online and have them delivered or probably buy them from a local fuel place um, and then you can refill your drums with these cans like in the summer you just go get kerosene refill your your barrels but then you can have 55 or 110 gallons of kerosene on hand and I've heard of people storing that stuff in the steel drums where it doesn't have any light because algae will grow in kerosene if it gets too much light um, just like the algae that grows in uh, diesel fuel that eats hydrocarbons um, they make some additives to prevent that but again anytime you put additives in here you need to retest it to see if the additives are going to make the, the heater smell funny okay the other thing is uh, be careful of kerosene that's not road taxed. For some goofy reason, you know, like diesel fuel, if it's dyed red, nobody's paid a road tax on it. It's for off-road or farm use. Now, kerosene, they did the same thing with it, and it has to be dyed red if it's going to be for off-road use. Well, you can't burn red dyed kerosene in your heater or it's going to smell funny and it don't burn right. So you need clear kerosene, which means that it has to have a road tax paid on it. So I'm paying to maintain our roads and highways every time I buy clear K1 kerosene now. I think they should fix that and make an exception because I don't have any vehicles that run on kerosene. The good part about that is if you have a diesel truck, you can run it on kerosene. This will run in a diesel engine just fine. Um... And then you have a backup fuel source, and it's actually legal because road tax has been paid on it because it's not died. Um, just a thought. <laughs> um, but yeah, this, uh, you know, a kerosene's a good all around uh, type of product. That it's a good prepping product, I think, to have. Um, there's even, I don't know how safe it is, there's people that disinfect wounds with kerosene. You can use kerosene to wash your hair to treat lice. I mean, there's all kinds of things you can do with kerosene. So it's a good step thing to have around. Um, I also use this same product in my oil lamps. Um, I don't buy lamp oil. Um, and people will tell you, like, oh, lamp oil is paraffin oil, and you're supposed to burn that. Well, guess what kerosene is? It's paraffin oil. Guess what they call kerosene in, in the UK? Paraffin. Okay? We just call it kerosene in the United States because we do. Okay, but yeah, it is the same thing, and it will burn just fine in your oil lamps. Uh, there's no reason to go spend ten dollars on a little tiny bottle of lamp oil when you can get, you know, this stuff. It's, it's four bucks for a gallon, right? Um, it, it'll work fine in your oil lamps as well for backup light. So that's just some thoughts on kerosene, how I, from, from somebody that uses kerosene as their primary heat source and wood as their backup heat source, um, it's just some thoughts as to some things you might want to consider, especially make sure you get some extra wicks. You can get these usually at Walmart, Tractor Supply, Lowe's, Home Depot. Now the ones at Lowe's didn't come with the extra igniter. A lot of people don't use these electric igniters, I do. I think they're just convenient because I use my heaters all the time and I hate having to, you know, I like to be able to push the button and light it. But if you're only using it in an emergency, I would say don't store the batteries in the heater because they might corrode. Just light, get, just light them with a lighter when you need to. Um, or put the batteries in when you're actually going to use it. But having these extra wicks will be real important if you run into a problem with your heater, you get bad kerosene, something goes wrong. Make sure you got an extra wick so you can keep that thing working and burning cleanly. All right, this is Tom, your frugal prepper. Let me know uh, what your thoughts are. Thanks. Bye.